In this video, you will see me making this cover. It is my first junk journal. It has a vintage vibe and is inspired by stem sets from Sample and Lorna's tailor-made journals. You will see my creative process and how it changes along the way. It is my intention to inspire you in your creative journey. This video is timestamped, so you can jump to the parts you want to see or watch it all if you like. Can't wait to hear and see if you like my journal. Hi, my name is Marion and my next project, this project, will be a junk journal. So this video will be all about making the cover of the junk journal. You probably would uh, know that from the previous uh, uh, clip you saw. But right now I'm filming and I don't even know how this cover um, will look like. So I am uh, still figuring things out at this moment. A week ago I had no clue on how I want it to look like. I just knew I wanted to make a junk journal. So never made one before. So not knowing, I kept myself busy making uh, the small stuff and in the meantime thinking about the cover. Do I want a fabric cover or paper? Hard or soft? How do I want to bind it? Um, how many signatures? What is the theme? And What's the purpose of the junk journal? I was starting to get really chaotic in my mind. And in the meantime, I was just crafting along with my uh, small items and they were great. Finally, I decided on a fabric cover and tea dyed paper for the signature. It took some time to make that. Um, and I thought, let's start filming already <laughs> because I made so many super cool, super cool or small makes um, for in the journal and um, when I was making uh, all these little makes I thought well that would be a cool purpose for the junk journal a storage for all the uh, vintage like embellishments so like for instance, uh, my uh, vin vintage medallions I made in the previous video, I have now in a, uh, in a small box uh, several of them. And wouldn't it be nice if they are in a journal? So nicely uh, displayed so I can figure out ways to make them work in a journal. So I thought that was a great idea, <laughs> if I say so myself. So all the little makes I made, I will make more of them so you can craft along with me. Because now I have like already made, finished uh, make and I will make more of them so you can um, see how I made them. So let me break down everything clear and chronological. <laughs> This will also help me out because <laughs> my mind is a bit chaotic at this time. Let's first talk about the tea dyeing. I love tea dyeing. I did some coffee dyeing uh, a while back. Uh, but now for the first time I tried tea dyeing and maybe I love it even better. So I took uh, one and a half liters of boiling water and 10 bags of cheap black tea. And then I put that in a thermos, a big thermos I had, let that sit for an hour or so. And then I poured everything into a really big container box because that was the one thing I had that will fit paper. And um, I did it in batches. So uh, because I don't have that much room on the floor to dry paper, I did it in like three days. And put some paper in like uh, six to eight pages of paper overnight and the next morning put it out to dry and then continued for three days and the last day I uh, also did some fabric and I will show you but this is uh, one of the tea bags um, because the tea bags I let dry and then 
took the tea out and then you have some really nice tea bag paper that you can uh, stamp on or collage with. You can do lots of things with this tea bag. So um, keep them in your stash. And this is the tea bag of the tea dyed paper. And they have a variety of colors. And this I'm going to use uh, for the signature. So it's just a really big stack. It's just a normal uh, printed paper. I don't know, it's about 80 or 90 grams, I think. Um, just a normal printed paper I put in. And I also put in this paper. This is uh, thicker, like 120 uh, GSM. I stamped it before tea dyeing. Uh, just to see if the stamp will stay, and it stayed. So this is the Stamperia uh, stamp you will see later. So I have tea, two uh, pages of this. And then I tea dyed some packing paper, some packing wrapping paper. I thought this design was very cool, but it was white, the paper. And so I tea dyed it and now it's really has a kind of a vintage vibe. So this was a, a bit of an experiment. And then I also um, did some fabric because the journal is going to be have a fabric cover. And the fabric is this. It's an old uh, duvet cover, really old. And it's like a light gray cotton, just a plain duvet cover. And um, I tea dyed it. So I will show you a picture of it. So you can also see the container I did it in. And, uh, and you see I did like wrinkled the fabric in the container like this. And then just um, overnight, then the next morning let out to dry. And it's really nice to dry the fabric on something plastic because um, if you put um, like kitchen towel or something under it, then it will also drain the tea and the color out of it. So it takes longer to dry then, but you get more color like these kinds of effects. That's what I noticed. So that is the tea dyeing. Uh, paper and let's see I will show you the rest of the materials and this box is full of uh, tiny projects for the for the <laughs> junk journal and I already have now a cliffhanger in the beginning of the video because I'm going to show that to you when I make the signature so that will be the next video on to all the materials. My desk is now piled with stuff and let's break it down. So the majority of the of the materials I have here, there could be maybe something that I'm going to add, but I don't know that right now. But uh, the most important is that I have uh, some colors I want to work with and I Recent, recently uh, purchased those and I wanted to work with it because I love the color. So it's always an advice or try to use the colors you love or if you want to experiment with some colors. So for me, it are these two. So I really love the combination and I love these colors. It's the peel paint and the aged mahogany. And uh, so this was the very first I knew when I wanted make a project that I wanted to use these two colors. So these are the leading for everything I'm choosing. I'm using the Scorched Timber just to distress. Could also use another brown. I found in the first Van Clare two colors that match um, the distress colors. And this is the Chianti and the Shady Lane. So when I want to use something that's not uh, water-based, I can stamp with these two. And I'm going to use a black and a brown to combine if I don't want to use some color. The paper I'm going to uh, use is, besides the tea dye paper you see for the signature, I'm also going to use some uh, craft paper. 
have some cardstock or how do you call it and i've um purchased these a while back the craft stock from tim holtz it's the the cool and the warm it's called so uh, these two it's a bit of a shimmer so these two and those have the colors that i love these two so this is from the the cool um craft stock pack and this from the warm so i'm going to uh, use these two colors and then i have the backdrops number five and i there is a lot of like vintage kind of wallpaper in them and i'm going to use these two so these are the so i'm going through it maybe a little bit quick but <laughs> I need the time for the cover. Um, I've selected two stencils uh, just to give some interest in the background if I want to. Um, this is from Elizabeth Craft Designs. It, uh, there is no number or anything on it. So I don't know. It's probably so called something like waves or I don't know. And then this is from the Your Creative Studio. And I don't know from which month it is. So it's um, you buy a uh, a box, and this was in it. And this is also like a little bit of a vintage wallpaper idea when you uh, stencil this. Then onto um, the stamps. Uh, these you saw when you saw my video about the craft products I purchased recently. This this uh, Stamperia. Um, I really like this. And these ones I use a lot in, uh, with the collaging. Uh, I just stamp them on uh, tea bag paper or other tea dyed or coffee dyed paper and then I collage with it. So that's very nice to use. And then these, these are my most recent purchases because um and this one is it is just so lovely uh, it's they both from sam pool from creative expressions and i've just stamped with these in my little makes and i because i always wanted to see how it will look like i st stamped it out on paper because I want, uh, then I have some idea of how it will look like. Because it's very different if you stamp it. So really love this. Um, I'm very glad with this uh, purchase. I've already tried this in my um, the little projects I made for this journal, and they're very lovely. And then this one, this is just really great. <laughs> And um, I love this style, and I think um, I will I will t probably buy more of these kinds of stamp sets because you know it's it, they are so versatile to use and really nice. I really like them. And yes, I'm very glad I bought these, and I had to buy them from England because in in the Netherlands they were like this one was all sold out so i had to go overseas for it so maybe i'm going to use more stamps but these are like the main stamps i'm going to use and then i'm going to use some hardware um, i have the tiny attacher which is kind of brand new as you can see so I'm going to make some good use out of it because in the cover I want to uh, not always use glue but also use hardware to attach like um, breads, eyelets and of course the tiny attacher. I'm probably going to use corn rounder here and there. So these are the hardware. Then I also have some own stash. And would you know, I have this wall. This is like, I don't know, 15 years old. <laughs> I, I found it 
in somewhere under in a cupboard or you know it's like almost like peel paint the color so and i had this laying around because i was probably trying to make some cords or you know i'm always like busy with my hands and it's not always something like a finished project sometimes just like a little bit of doodling and uh, crafting so uh, this is macrame because i wanted to learn how to do that probably <laughs> and I, <laughs> I made these so i could use them in the project but uh, because of this color i thought it's interesting and i have here um buttons but these are through the years all buttons from clothes i bought and these are the spare buttons and i put them in a box so this is kind of my life of clothes with buttons two weeks ago i was at a flea market and it was a really good flea market just a, a neighborhood one and it was like you can buy things for 10 cents 20 cents you know really the good one and i bought some things that just interest me like this uh, curtain tape and uh, i already cut off a piece and tea dyed it because you can put stuff in here and yes i'm going to do, definitely going to do something with this i bought a piece of curtain lace i tea dyed it I already cut it apart and has some uh, here some lace bits and here this is also very interesting and then i have this uh, ribbon you know i think i've just it's like 20 cents or something i paid for this it's ridiculous right let's see how much is on it and then um i bought uh, this is an old book where you can keep your stamps in and i have purchased this uh, tim holtz postage stamps stamp set and then um sometimes i'm just going to uh, an, an evening stamping it and uh, die cutting it and then filling this book with all kinds of little stuff and i have it nicely displayed and it's very handy when you're crafting and when you want to look what you want to match with it and then this book is so great. I think um, I bought like a euro or maybe less. I paid for it and it's from 1965. And it has all kinds of botanical drawings. It is so great. You know, it's full, full, full of it. And it has uh, some text with it. So, and I made a uh, little one so i'm going to show you give you a little sneak peek of my box of little projects and um i made this one this has the um, the drawing and i've collaged this frame and let's see it's so great right so something botanical is certainly coming <laughs> very soon uh, because i love botanical stuff and then for the last bit, I was at the warehouse, uh, Sustrene Grene, I think I told it in a previous video, and I bought these napkins, and they, this gave me a kind of uh, vintage wallpaper vibe, and you can um, tear them apart, they have three layers, and they can collage with it, and it's really lovely collaging with this, because you have the first... The, the second and the third layer. The third layer is white and the first is just this pattern. And the second layer is very interesting because it's it has kind of the um, drawing on it. Or you could see it on this uh, collage, this white. You see, it has the, the drawings of these leaves on it. So you have like two kinds of things you can collage with. And... I bought these um, felt, more of a gold kind of color. Really liked it. And this ribbon. So these are just some things I um, purchased um, a short while ago. And I'm going to use it in my projects and in this journal. 
But for now, enough talking about products and let's go and craft. Let's make this cover. The cover um, has a layer of fabric on the outside, a layer of felt on the inside and paper also on the inside. So the felt is in between. And I have already cut to size the um, fabric and the felt. So the felt is an A4 size. And I have put down the measurements of it. So the inside, so this felt is an A4. And an A4 is about 11 three quarters of an inch by eight and a quarter inch and so that is also the size of my paper that i tea dyed it's in just a standard a4 uh, size so i put it on the felt i traced it and i cut the felt this pa this fabric is bigger and i don't know why i did it but i thought this was interesting to leave like an edge of the fabric. So if I turn it around and I have this, um, this line here and I thought that was interesting. So we'll let, leave this for the cover, for the front cover. So I turn it around and then the felt will come onto here. And I'm going to staple it because I did a test with gluing a small with a small sample and I don't like it. I don't like the feel of it. The glue seeps uh, through and it already here um, is coming apart. So I can just like tear it apart here. So I won't do this. And I don't know. I'm not liking it. So I'm, I thought I have a, a mini attacher or no, a tiny attacher. Uh, so let's use that. It is a junk journal. So everything is allowed and I'm going to staple it to the fabric. And first I'm going to try it to just put down the edge because I'm going to sew in the um, signature, it will already be attached with sewing. So then I don't have to do any stapling in the middle. So I just want to do it along the edge. Um, so it will be exciting to, <laughs> to see if it works. So by now I don't know if, it's, if that will work. The, um, on here there will be some cardstock because I want to have it a little bit sturdy and um, I have here um, made some measurements because I thought I also want to see an edge of the felt and let's just do it uh, like a quarter inch and want to be uh, a quarter inch uh, from the middle so half an inch free no cardstock in the middle for sewing in the signature and i will do the cardstock uh, i have to cut it to size i will do that um, in a minute and then i calculated it it's not my strongest thing calculation but five and a quarter inch by seven and three quarters of an inch i always try to round it to you know not like seven digits behind the, the comma. So um, um, it's going to be like the the plain color in this in this size and I'm going to attach it with breads. So that's going to be like this if you see it in this corner and then cut to size and then with the the wallpaper design, I want to make a pocket, a big pocket, and I want to tear it 
so it's going to be a pocket like from the side and then lower to the middle like this and i just want to tear it distress it and i'm going to attach it i don't know uh, how <laughs> probably um, with the breads i have here breads and i'm going to do the pocket with the breads and then maybe here i will use an eyelet but i have to like um, decide on the on the order of doing things <laughs> that will be very uh, <laughs> like when i've stapled something well you can of course uh, get it out and breads also so that will not be a problem to take it out um, but I have to like in my head get get it clear in what kind of order I'm going to work but I've decided to first cut it to size so that's what I'm going to do and let's do that first and then you can see it when I lay it out it will be much more clear I've cut the craft stop go to round the uh, corners just with the, um, the four millimeter the smallest because I like it more than the just straight corners and then I'm also going to take the felt with it with the rounded corner so I'm just going to lay the craft stock on it and just snip a little bit off so that because the felt doesn't fit the corner rounder already tried it it's too thick okay so this will be the idea putting this here and then for the design paper i've already tore one just to see how it would look and it will be like this and then this one i will also tear and i've made a mark because i and then i'm going to tear it here where the mark is and i'm going to give it a little just a little room before i start tearing and then i'm just going to tear it first a little bit on this side then this side and just let it happen a little bit directing it a little bit and letting it happen so that will be like this so now it will it's taking some shape now it is um following the order of things so i think i need to distress it uh, before i attach it of course so distress these pockets and distress and maybe bit of sanding of these two and then i think i'm going to attach the pocket to the background and in the meanwhile i'm going to think about what i'm going to attach first um, but i think because i want to do something with the cover like maybe some stamping I have to do that before I attach the fabric to the felt. So let's see how far I can get with this. And I will think about it in the meanwhile, because that's when I do my thinking <laughs> while I'm crafting. Uh, because when I'm not crafting, I'm not thinking about it. In a, I'm going to change it anyway. So I will be back after distressing this. I am making some progress. I have distressed everything and I've already assembled one side and I will assemble this side on camera. But let me show you. I've sanded it and it's just like sanding until you are satisfied with the result. Then I distressed everything. Um, I stamped and I will explain this stamp because I'm going to do it again on this side. And I put um, eyelets here, and I um, and I glued, and I left a little bit of space, 
so I'm not glued it down flat but a little bit of space as you can see because I want to really put something in here like a bit thicker than just a card multiple cards or a book or whatever so there's this side and let's do this side and I'm putting this out of the way and then um, I have combined some stamps and that still going to use the Stamperia stamps that is this set and I've chosen this one and I'm going to do that on the top let's see um, at I think I did it this way up and then I combined it with uh, two stamps from another uh, sample die uh, stamp set. I've combined it with this little stamp and what did I do more? The, the 48. So that's what I combined with this stamp and let's do that again. You can combine different stamps and you get a whole other stamp so that's really nice okay so this is the stamp let's clean it up okay and then this one has to go on here and then first I first will do the the eyelets not the gluing and I have some clips I'm going to use to hold it in place. I have my crocodile at the side, and eyelets. And I'm going to first line this, the longer side up. Clip it. Well, it doesn't matter which side you do first. And then the smaller hole, and then I'm just going to look at, do I see a point where I want it? And don't want it too close to the edge. And then picking a spot and then just pressing like here. And then right away, I'm going to put the eyelet in. I've here my little box with some different ones. I'm gonna use um this color i think it's more bronze bronze or brass i don't know how it's called but the color will be the best for this journal i think and then putting it in Uh, the the back side is going to be not be visible so it doesn't matter how it looks on the back so I don't use a washer for this one only just the eyelet and then lining it up and it's just a gentle press and then it's in so that's how simple with with eyelets it's like you just have to do a couple and then you get the hang of it so the first ones didn't go well with, <laughs> with me but then you know after 10 or so 
it's fine. And then I'm going to line this uh, side and I'm bending it a little bit and then clipping it and then, then you get a little bit of room here. So that's what I'm going to do. Clip it here and here. Then it's again the same process. And here's the other one. So if I am pulling back the cover again, we have like two pages inside of the cover I mean let's see if I can line this up okay so here we have it and it looked like something already right so I'm going to embellish this with uh, some labels but I don't have to do it right now because um, I want to put my mind at ease in how I'm going to uh, fas fasten this, this all. And maybe I'm going to do, I can do the breads first. Then I have to put here and here on either side. And then I can make the um, cover the front side of the cover on the fabric and then I have to uh, put some um, staples in and that will be on the felt. Let me take you with me for the last breath so you can see how I'm doing it. I'm just kind of searching for the good place and with just a pokey tool I am pressing through, wiggling till I have a big enough hole. And I positioned everything first and I put some clips on it. So I have here now, I have a hole. As you can see, I'm going to put a bread in. Sometimes it's a little bit, yes, going through the felt and then it is just the matter of pressing it flat, then removing the clips. And then let's see this out of the way. Put a because this is so sharp thing on it. And then look at this. It's already a cover. I really like it. And you know this this felt uh, gives it a little bit more uh, body to it. And a bit of softness and the paper gives it a little mo more structure to it so yes i like it so far and i want to put some uh, labels on and i have my a book that i've all also got from the flea market it's an old stamp uh, book and, and but i thought about these labels uh, these are labels from Elizabeth Craft Design and um, because I don't want to put too much on it right now because I can always add more this I want to leave kind of empty because there's going to go something in here so I was thinking about putting a label on here and then Putting a label here. And 
and then maybe putting some of my uh, stamps on it and I can also I can stamp these I'm going to do that and then putting this is really vintage has a vintage vibe to it this one and also this one don't want scent and let's see i really like this uh, round uh, this one really nice don't know if it will fit this also a circle circle and a circle do i like that then maybe um, with this one this one this one for here all in one color it's a, that i don't have to because i also have green ones the same one in green so i can also put on a green one i think i like that Something like this. Stamp this. Just have a little embellishment on it. And then this one. I can put something. I have that also in green. Let's put this one back. In green. Oh, I'm, I'm off screen. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm searching for things. Off screen. Um, let's see. Am I in screen right now? There's not much that can fit in screen <laughs> if I already have a big journal. So I have this same one in green. Will that be better? I like that. Put this one back. And I also have the red. Um, do I want do, to do the same thing with this? I can also choose so much to choose from. And I also like this one. So really handy. You can make it yourself, of course, but this is a really old one. As you can see, that's all yellow. <laughs> But it's a really nice one to um, to keep your uh, stamps, and you can you don't have a box where it's all cluttered and you cannot see it. And now you can just see and sort it by color, and have all everything in one book, and you just put it on your shelf. I think this is brilliant. Let's see. I have to fit something together, and I like it when it has some color, a lot of color in it. Um, let's see, not with a number. This one, this is a torn one. Mm -hmm. Like this, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. So let's, let me figure this out. Maybe it's because it's the uh, too much color. And I need a dark one with this. Let's see. This one's also very nice. Let's see if I can put this out. Like this one. Yes. I think this will work. What do you think? Let's just see if I can position it and let's see, put it back. I have to distress it. I have to take some stamps. I'm going to use uh, this stamp set again. And I think I'm going to take the notes for this stamp. 
and I've already looked at it that's that's why I'm doing it so fast <laughs> and I have an autograph this one that will fit in here so let me do that uh, and I'll come back to you so I have chosen some stamps and I'm just gluing them down distress them all I went a little bit back and forth with some colors and some designs but these these stamps from Tim Holtz they are so gorgeous and I haven't even stamped them all yet so I'm still busy with stamping everything so there you have it there this is as far as I go with the inside and some embellishments on it it does it is not really a junk journal per se but you no know, a little bit <laughs> i think it's a little bit too perfect for a junk journal but let's see how we continue with this um this is kind of a cover and then we go to the fabric so the fabric is going to go like this but i also want to embellish it first before i'm going to attach it um, to this so let's go to the fabric cover the front cover front and back outside cover it just about fits in the screen because it's a it's a big uh, journal and I've started to lay something out on the fabric and let me show you I've just been playing it's so fun and let me show you what I lay down so the um, focal point is the beautiful stamp from Sam Poole so I could just not leave that and I um, stamped it in the first fine Claire the Chianti color and I have um, made a frame collage the frame and i put it in so this will be my focal point i have uh, cut some of the lace curtain and i've put this here on the side i have a paper clip with some beads on it some stamped a stamped circle and this is the stamp let me see yes i have it here on in this stamp set there are also very nice little embellishments so i stamped this one in a circle here and this is the the tea uh, bag paper i've tea dyed the tea bag paper <laughs> and just some um, some of this uh, jute uh, rope and a little circle from the lace I've just cut up uh, this one and the back side I uh, will have a pocket here and this is the die cut lace and a from the from a rice paper I cut out a moth and the because of the color scheme is really nice and then this is the uh, curtain tape I tea dyed and as you can see this is really nice to attach things on here and you can like dye it in any color you want and I just had a play with it, just putting a safety pin on. This is a really nice um, porcelain kind of, I don't know, it's from an old uh, art uh, object I that just fell apart and I saved the little porcelain things and I attached it here. It is so from my own stash in this a little piece of bark also from my old stash i love to collect sticks and 
little things from nature that notice I notice. So I um, put some of this yarn in here so the color will come back and and I will put this on the back sides of the cover. Also to give this sides and this sides um, a bit more layers so it can because it's fabric it's flexible and give it a little bit more body as you can see here very vaguely i have already did a testing on um, stenciling this is um, a, st a stamp i'm gonna cut it out and on the background uh, that is one of the first things i'm going to do is I'm going to stencil and I'm going to take this stencil that I already showed you with the materials and I'm going to stencil it and I probably going to use the scorch timber maybe a color but I have to see and and then I'm going to figure out how I'm going to attach everything because that is like the big uh, challenge in this project so this is a very lovely result with the H mahogany and the scorch timber stenciling on this. And I have prepared the pocket. I have glued this uh, die cut lace, but I did not glue the very end of it so that it has a little bit of a playful effect. I bended it a little bit so and then i collage this uh, moth out of a rice paper a fuzzy cut uh, um, with a lot of uh, botanical stuff and i put this one on because of the color it just matches really 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 well and here the stamp this is from the sample and that looks very lovely on here. I put it a little bit uh, in the middle because a strip is going to come here. So this one is going here and I've decided to put two eyelets on this side and that's what I'm going to do first. I also prepared uh, this, I stamped it and the little dot of glue on this so that it wouldn't escape and then this i'm going to fasten with small little breads like these really tiny ones and i because i think the other ones are a bit too big so let's see how this works so i will do this off camera because i think i'm it's going to be a lot of a lot of fiddling <laughs> going on, so I'll be back. I did it, but it took me some time to get everything done because, yes, it was very hard with the fabric. It like <laughs> shoved all every side and I need, really needed to put the fabric in between the uh, crocodile like with this ones, but I did it and um so this is the result and i do like it and here are the eyelets and i've put some glue here and here so this is nicely fastened together with this so that's done and now i want to do the strips and that i'm going to um, staple to the other cover i made before this so now i have these um, borders that i want to staple and i'm going to staple them onto the felt inside cover so i'm going to old-fashionedly pin everything down and then staple it I did the stapling, but I couldn't do this on camera because it was such a job to do. But I'm glad I did it and I changed a little bit um, what I wanted. 
so I just stapled all around but I folded the fabric to the inside and I also used some uh, thin yarn like this I had in my in my stash from years ago and I combined that with the stapling so that the it would not just be like you see staples everywhere and so this is the result I have a nice uh, pocket here and I glued it here and this eyelet uh, <laughs> didn't survive because of the fabric I turned inside so on the inside it looks very uh, stapled but that's okay I didn't do yarn inside because that would be like too much <laughs> I couldn't handle that but it's going to be a signature in here and lots of other distractions so I mean I don't I don't find it really disturbing so I'm going to go with this and I'm very happy but it is not finished yet because I have to do the borders and um and I have to change that also a little bit because it's changed so <laughs> so this this has to go um here and maybe i le let it stick over a little bit i think i like that and i have to shorten it and then i have a button and um, and i want to do the button in the middle because maybe i'm going to do some closure with it i don't know for sure but I'm going to put this on with uh, some embellishments I have here. I have this uh, lace already cut to size that's going on here. So that will be the front. And it, the nice thing of this um, yarn here that I can put stuff on it if I want to. So if um, I think I need some more bits on on this uh, journal I can add it so I love that and then on the back side there is this thing going and I'm not sure how I am if I'm doing it the full length let's put it in screen full length down or maybe a bit shorter I think I will do that little bit shorter because I have this pretty dangle I call it a dangle I don't know how to call it embellishment <laughs> and um, I like it that it hangs like this on the fabric and not on this so that's going to be um, yes and as I'm going to make something for in this pocket something big so that will so I don't know if I need anything here, but you know, I could change my mind. <laughs> so I'm going to finish up and let you see the end result. So I finished the cover. Can you believe it? It's ready. Look at this. I'm very happy with it. Although uh, during crafting, I changed my mind about some things because certain things work and certain things don't and I've put down this fabric I don't know if even if you can call it lace I, I fasten it he just here and with the button with a little embellishment on it and down here I put some uh, of the die cut lace because I really love it under it and I did some a little bit of stamping I had some butterflies with some stamping the butterflies I collaged it's rice paper and then the back side Just a little bit of stamping because I'm going to put something in this 
pocket and then put this one on and just stitched it with the same kind of the same color thread and then under here little stamping here and then this is it so the cover is ready and I'm very happy with it so now it's time to fill it up to make the signature so that will be in the next video so thank you all for watching having the patience with me <laughs> to make this uh, cover and um, I will be filming directly after this for the signature so hopefully that video will come soon after this one so thank you for watching and bye